Well, there's some absolutely mental class changes coming next reset. This is for Druid, Hunter, Paladin, Rogue, and Shaman. And quite honestly, some of these are really quite surprising, and I'm intrigued to see how they actually play out later on in the phases, not just right now in phase two. Now, these are due to go live on the 27th of February, so as I say, in a few days' time at reset, well, server maintenance, and I would kind of expect to see some more added to this before then. This is probably just the first round that's going into the next reset. So Druid's got quite a few and they're really really good so first of all life bloom mana cost has been reduced by 50 percent and also life bloom refunds half its new base mana cost per stack when it expires or is dispelled so obviously you're going to be getting less mana back because it now costs less but you're still going to get the mana back they're trying to make living seed a little bit more useful so now it heals for 50 percent of the critical heal that planted the seed where this was 30 percent but this heal now blooms from non-periodic healing received in addition to any damage taken. It's still not great just because of the low amounts of crit, but at least now it might be a consideration. Nourish has also had its mana cost reduced by 27%, but these are the big ones for you boomies, so classic go, you'll be very happy with these, I think. Moonkin form now also reduces the mana cost of Moonfire by 50% and increases Moonfire periodic damage by 50%, and Sunfire also benefits from this. So both dots are going to be doing even more periodic damage now and costing less mana, which is absolutely huge and actually gives a lot more reason to even use Moonkin form in the first place, and particularly in PvP as well. Moonkins also can now cast non-healing resto spells without cancelling their shapeshift now we know this is just a quality of life change that comes further down the line but you're going to get it right now in season of discovery so this is things like remove curse remove poison abolish poison innovate rebirth revive i mean frame reviving is pretty cool because really revives out of combat so it kind of is neither here nor there whether you can cast it in moonkin form but still nice and you're also going to be able to buff with mark of the wild and gift of the wild as well now this is absolutely huge because the sheer amount of mana that it costs to cancel form cast a spell go back in form like you're not going to feel as punished to have to combat res or to innovate someone or to even do some dispelling obviously so i mean that's an amazing change that well yeah should have been in in the first place really and then finally furious storm rage so this rune is already very powerful but now when this rune makes healing touch instant it now also makes it castable in all shapeshift forms now this again is amazing because now in moonkin where it's probably most relevant you're also going to be able to use healing touch touch in form as long as you've obviously got a fury of storm rage proc so i mean that's massive hunters of course are going to see a bit of a nerf because i don't think blizzard intended melee hunter to be quite as strong as it is but now dual world specialization no longer grants a 30 percent damage bonus to raptor strike for wielding two weapons of the same type so at the moment it increases the damage done by your offhand weapon by 50 percent and yeah the bonus to your raptor strike is as long as you're using two axes or two fist weapons or just two of the same weapons weapon type that 30 percent damage is going to be gone now which is quite a substantial nerf to that actually i suppose now it does open up more options for weapons though but you're still going to get the 50 percent off and weapon damage using it this one for paladins really intrigued me because crusader strike now deals holy damage instead of physical damage so it ignores armor and it's now affected by holy damage prevention so if something's immune to spell damage it won't do any damage but it does still count as a melee attack and the reason this is important is because you don't want the spell hit cap just for crusader strike obviously so it's still a melee attack you'll still need the same amount of hit for that as everything else but now these high armor boss values that we're seeing in nomragon aren't actually going to make that much of a difference and how this is going to play out at later game will be really interesting because i'm assuming this is going to scale with holy damage or plus damage and healing or whatever you've actually got a lot of options for that as well at the moment like the stv weapons that were added so i guess we'll see how that plays out in the long term but then you've also got seal of martyrdom can no longer trigger art of war and will no longer be triggered by frost oil or other weapon procs i'm sure those of you that have been playing rep paladin a lot in this phase that will make sense why that change is there whereas to me rather than a nerf it's just a hot fix because you wouldn't expect your seals to actually proc art of war because it's melee attacks but then at the same time they kind of are so i don't know you'll have to let me know in the comments if you're a rep paladin what you think of that rogues quality of life book that they get which is redirect has had a massive change and probably a change again it's how it should have probably been when it actually first launched but redirect no longer triggers or is affected by the global cooldown and its own cooldown has been reduced to 10 seconds and the developers have actually put a note here saying when redirect is combined in a macro with other combo point related abilities it often does not function as expected we recommend not including 
including it in such macros. So there's a bit of a caveat to it. You know, you still might have issues with it in macros, but 10 second cooldown, I mean, that's so much better and actually makes this a super useful, maybe slightly overpowered. Main Ghost now generates three combo points on your target and base energy cost has been reduced to 15. Now this is what tank rogues would use and really this all of these rogue changes seem to be aimed towards tanks rather than DPS, even though DPS are gonna get a nice benefit from the redirect being on a 10 second cooldown, not so much from main gauche. But just a flesh wound fret bonus increased such that rogue tanks will generate approximately 30% more fret. Now that's huge, and like I say, you're gonna have main gauche giving extra combo points, costing less energy to use, and you're gonna be having 30% extra fret almost passively from just a flesh wound. Pretty sick. And now Shaman has had a lot of changes. Two-handed Mastery Room now also provides 10% increased attack power and 10% increased chance to hit with spells after hitting a target with a two-handed weapon. Now that's massive because being two-handed and being able to get spell hit capped that easy because you're getting 10% hit when you're using two-handed weapons as well is absolutely huge and obviously 10% increased attack power as well. Shamanistic Rage Rune now grants 5% of the Shaman's maximum mana per second instead of a value scaling from attack power, spell power or healing power. So this means you don't have to worry about like double rock biter dual wielding before using Shamanistic Rage and stuff like that. It just makes it a lot more... Yeah, simple. You just press a button, you know how much mana you're going to get from it. Spirit of the Alpha Rune now grants the Casting Shaman 20% increased attack power if they cast a spell on a target other than themselves. Again, absolutely massive. And the reason this one in particular is really big is on the feet runes, you haven't really got anything that's super useful as, let's say, an Enhancement Shaman. Decoy Totem for solo PvE and even fights that you want immunity to movement impairing effects and stuff like that can be useful. Spirit of the Alpha now pretty much is going to be your go-to rune as enhancement, even if it wasn't already, because not only are you going to increase the threat generated by the tank, you're going to get 20% attack power from one rune. I mean, double ability on one rune slot like that, which is benefiting the tank and yourself, is absolutely massive. Earth Shield's mana cost has been reduced by 67% and charges increased from 3 to 9, so the base amount healed now properly scales with level and is about 50% higher than previously at level 40 which again is just a really nice change. The Power Surge tooltip revised to clarify functionality. So this rune periodically grants mana every 5 seconds equal to 15% of the Shaman's intellect. Some potential timing issues that could have sometimes made it give less mana than intended have been fixed. Now I've been levelling a Shaman for any of you that know, fairly casually, but been levelling it a little bit and uh, I haven't noticed any issues with it, but I'm sure those of you that are raiding Gnomeregon at level 40 probably have. And finally, Ancestral Guidance cooldown has been reduced to one minute where this was two minutes. Again, really nice, but I feel like Shamanistic Rage, Earth Shield, you know, Way of Earth if you're tanking, there's a lot of competition in that slot where you don't see that many people using Ancestral Guidance. And even if it's on a one minute cooldown, I don't know, you're probably still not going to see many people using it. But they're all the changes at the moment that are going to be coming in next reset. And I think some of them are absolutely massive, in particular the ones for the Boomies and the Shamans is just going to be, well, game changing for you in, in some circumstances. So if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. Sorry about maybe the mic quality might not be particularly good just using a wireless mic because I couldn't be bothered to go and turn a PC on. But I'll see you on the next one.